Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the independent review section this morning. I hope you've all um, rested well and that most of you are able to attend the whole session and is not interrupted by load shedding. So yeah, um, let me introduce myself. I'm Monia van Sale. I'm a chartered accountant qualified in 2006. Um, I did my articles in, in Devon and I've been in corporate for 14 years and then I decided to start my own practice. So I'm basically doing consulting work at the moment, servicing a broad spectrum of clients all over South Africa. So I hope you're going to enjoy the session today. I want to ask that we please um, keep it interactive, um, ask a lot of questions. And if you've got any insights or inputs from your side, please share it with everyone. Let's learn together today. Um, that's the best way to learn from each other. So yeah, like I've said, um, my business name is Own Business Advisory Services. If you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, it's on the slides. So the course content for today would basically be consisting of understanding what independent reviews is, understanding how to perform an independent review engagement, understanding the independent review process, and to be able to report on the independent review engagement, and then how to obtain the independent reviewer license. Um, just by indication, um, I'm not sure the, the people that's on, on the training session, if you can just maybe indicate to me what level you guys are on so that I can know whether you intermediate, you're basically still um, wanting to do re independent reviews, you have done some before, so we can just make sure that we can address everyone's needs during the day. So the modules are consisting of module one to five. We're going to have a short break after each hour. So I'm going to try and fit in the modules in between. So there's a, just a small comfort break for everyone so that everyone can just grab a cup of coffee or if they need to go to the bathroom, they can quickly do that in the 10 minutes at the end of each hour. So we will pace the, the sessions like that for the day. So we will start off with module one, um, which is what is the independent review? I'm going to jump in into that. I just want to share a quote with you guys. Um, this is quite very meaningful. Everyone knows Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, Learn as you will live forever. Live like you will die tomorrow. How can we be the best of ourselves is by learning. And I believe that you should learn something every day of your life. And you should really live your life like every day is the last day that you will be here on earth. I think then all of us will be living life to the fullest. So let's jump into section one. So what is an independent review? So independent reviews is basically a limited assurance engagement. If you, if you think about the different compilations and auditing and reviews out there, it's not like a an, an external audit that you've got full on assurance. It's only a limited assurance engagement. So you basically perform limited procedures, which is primarily consisting of inquiry and analytical procedures that you do throughout the engagement. So you will get an understanding of the client's business. You will understand how his processes work, what infrastructure is there, what IT systems is in place, and, and at the end, what and ends up in the financial statement as a whole. So the ISRE 2400 revised is the most important standard that relates mostly to this section that we will be dealing to today. So I've also included this in the references at the end. So it's a very nice document to go through. There's quite a lot of examples and stuff that you can work through on your own. Okay, so <clears throat> all companies that are not required to have an audited financial statement um, must have their financials independently reviewed. There is some exceptions of companies where all the shareholders are also the directors. So there's basically no external people involved in the business. 
the same set of directors are there, the same set of um, um, shareholders are there. So there is no requirement there for an independent review or an audit to be done. The, the Companies Act requires public companies and state-owned companies to have an audit. So there's no way that you can get around that. That's law and you need to comply with that. In addition to that, the regulations which provide for both activity and the size criteria to determine whether or not a company requires audited financial statements, require any company that falls within the following categories in a particular financial year to have its financial statements audited. So any profit or non-profit company um, in the ordinary course of his primary activities that holds assets in a fiduciary capacity for persons who are not related to the company and the aggregate value of the assets held during the financial year exceeds the 5 million rand. So that is when you've got like external parties that provides financing, there's a loan account there on the balance sheet, then you need to have um, this done because it exceeds the 5 million rand value. Any non-profit companies, um, if it was incorporated directly or indirectly by state, an organ of state, a state-owned company, an international company, a foreign entity, or a company. Uh, or primarily to perform a statutory or regulatory, regulatory function in terms of any legislation, or to carry out a public function at the direct or indirect initiation or direction of an organ of state a state-owned company, an international company, or a foreign state entity for the purpose of ancillary to such a function, or any other companies whose public interest score is that in that financial year is 350 or more. At least 100, but less than 350, if its annual financial statement for that year were internally compiled. I'm sure all of you guys know I know most case we and draft works, all those, there is like a population that you can do. You enter all the sales figures, the number of employees on that screen, and then it pops out whether the audit is required, whether the independent review, or whether just a complete compilation can be performed. So all companies that are not required to have audited financial statements must have the financial statements independently review. There is an exception, like I said, where all the shareholders and directors are the same people. Then there is no requirement for either audit or independent review. So who can perform an independent review? An independent review can be performed by a practitioner who was not involved in the preparation of the financial statements. So if you prepare the financial statements, you won't be able to do the independent review because that will con contradict the independence um, requirement that you need to comply with. You cannot prepare the financials and do the review at the same time. So based on the PI score, if it's 100 plus, then a registered auditor can do the review or a member of a professional body registered in Section 33 of the Auditing Professions Act. If the score is less than 100, then any person that's qualified to be appointed as an accountant officer of Section 6123, um, Section 124 of the Closed Corporations Act can perform this reviews. So just to highlight that, these are the ones in terms of the companies, um, the CC Act, these people that are members of the SICA, um, they are chartered accountants, they are AGAs, auditors that are registered in accordance with the provision of the Auditing Act, a registered audit, or ACE, they can do that as well. Then we've got a few other organizations here, the South African Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, the South African Institute of Professional Accountants, the Chartered Association of Certified Accountants, the Institute of Administration and Com Commerce in South Africa, the South African Business Accountants, and then members of the Chartered Institute for Business Management. 
So there's only a limitation on, on this one because it's only certain members that will qualify for this. But if we look at the Companies Act, it states that companies with a public interest score of 100 to 349 I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.